Many organometallic reagents, especially those on the high end of the reactivity series, are strongly basic. Things like organolithiums and Grignard reagents are essentially glorified carbanions, and this makes them strong bases. For example, if we look at the pKa of their conjugate acids, which is something like an alkane, alkene, aromatic, or alkyne, these are very high pKa values, and they'll deprotonate anything with a pKa less than this range. The general principle here, and we've seen this before, is that any nucleophile, any Lewis base, also has the potential to act as a Bronsted base, and so we have to watch out for Bronsted base reactivity when we're working with organometallic compounds. This is particularly true for RLI, the organolithiums, and RMGX, the Grignard reagents. This can lead to reactivity that we don't want to happen. For example, say we started with an alkyl tosylate like this, and our goal was to perform a substitution reaction using methyl lithium to methylate it. This looks like a great way to establish a carbon-carbon bond, since the carbon linked to the tosyl group is electrophilic, and the methyl carbon and methyl lithium is nucleophilic. So this looks like a way to establish a carbon-carbon bond, and the product we would get would be one in which the methyl group has replaced the tosyl group through a nucleophilic substitution process, through something like an SN2 mechanism. Unfortunately, this will not work as advertised. Instead, the methyl anion will act as a Bronsted base rather than a Lewis base or nucleophile. And in doing so, it will deprotonate a beta hydrogen, resulting in E2 elimination. This gives an alkene product in which the elements of toxic acid, HOTS, have been eliminated from the starting material, and this isn't what we wanted. In order to forge this carbon-carbon bond through a substitution reaction, we have to use some other kind of more mild organometallic reagent. The main point for now is that we should watch out for Bronsted base reactivity deprotonation by the carbon group in the organometallic in context when we want a nucleophilic reaction to take place. Because organolithiums and Grignard reagents are so basic, there's a very long list of functional groups that are absolutely incompatible with these reagents. In other words, they will react with these reagents either as Bronsted acids or as Lewis acids. Sometimes we want this to occur, and that's totally fine, but when we don't want it to occur, these reactions can be problematic side reactions that prevent what we want to happen from happening. On this slide, I've listed a number of functional groups that are either too acidic or too electrophilic not to react with organolithiums or organogrignards. And just to go through the list briefly, Starting with the Bronsted acids, we can look at the pKa's of everything with a blue dot next to it. We'll see that all of these have a pKa that's lower than the typical hydrocarbon pKa, which is, say, around 40 to 50. These would be things like OH with a pKa of 15, NH2 pKa of 35, NHR similar territory, a carboxylic acid absolutely incompatible with an organolithium or Grignard. A sulfonic acid, these can be right down around zero. So all of these pKa's are far too low to be compatible with R-, the conjugate base of a hydrocarbon. SH is down at about 10, and even a terminal alkyne at 25 is incompatible with RLI or RMGX in a number of cases. The other groups on this slide are electrophilic and undergo reactions in which the organometallic acts as a nucleophile toward the electrophilic group. Many of these groups contain polarized pi bonds, and the big problem is nucleophilic addition of the organometallic to these pi bonds. So, for example, NO2 contains the N double bond O group. The cyano group obviously contains a polarized CN triple bond. Aldehydes and ketones both contain the carbonyl group, which we'll see very shortly, reacts with organolithiums and Grignard reagents quite quickly. But even esters and amides, other carboxylic acid derivatives, tend to be incompatible with these reagents because although they're less electrophilic than the ketone and aldehyde, they still have the polarized pi bond and are still susceptible to addition by these extremely strong nucleophiles, RLI and RMGX. And finally, epoxides, which have electrophilic carbons linked to the oxygen within the three-membered ring, are susceptible to ring opening, essentially nucleophilic substitution and cleavage of one of the CO bonds by the nucleophilic organolithium or Grignard reagent.
What this often means in a practical sense is that we have to use the organolithium or Grignard reagent at an early stage in synthesis before we've put a large number of potentially reactive functional groups within the compound. So when you're using these reagents in synthesis, keep this in mind. Organometallic reagents are nucleophiles at carbon. This means that in general they react with electrophiles, typically through electron flow that involves the donation of the pair of electrons in the RM bond toward an electrophile. And this might involve an addition process as shown in the first reaction or a substitution process at the electrophile if the electrophile bears a good leaving group. And that's what we see in the second case. In the first case, from the electrophile's perspective, this is an addition reaction. Notice that M plus is also formed. And so from the nucleophile's perspective, this looks like a substitution of E, the electrophile, for M, the metal. We have a similar situation in the second case with M plus being generated as a result of this electron flow, but at the same time, X minus, the conjugate base of the leaving group, is also generated. The first reaction is typical of the addition of organometallic reagents to carbonyl compounds. And the second reaction we've actually already seen is typical of transmetallations or SN2 processes involving carbon electrophiles or other electrophiles with good leaving groups embedded.